noble metals. So versatile you can make almost anything out of them. Millions of objects made every year. A staggering variety. Silver has been known for at least 5,000 years and has always played a distinctive role in the story of mankind. The Sumerians called gold the metal of heaven. The Incas called it the sweat of the sun. Platinum was brought to Europe from South America in the 16th century by the Spaniards. They called it platina because it was like plata or silver. But one thing all these three have in common, hallmarks. Hallmarks are borne by virtually all gold, silver and platinum articles made or sold in Britain. Hallmarks are protection. How do they protect you? When you find a hallmark, you find a unique and concise store of information. And it isn't as complicated as it looks. This mark tells you that the metal is up to one of the legal standards of purity, in this case, sterling silver. This, where it was tested. Today, only the four official assay offices, London, Birmingham, Sheffield and Edinburgh, are authorised to hallmark. This one, when it was tested. And lastly, this one, the sponsor's mark, who made or commissioned it. So, a hallmark is an individual pedigree for each single piece of gold, silver, or platinum. It all began in London over 600 years ago, when King Edward I made the Guild of Goldsmiths responsible for the craft, and laid down that all articles should be tested before sale to ensure that the quality was at least as good as his money. was found to be inferior, the maker was fined. But if it passed, a leopard's head was punched onto it. This symbol, known as the hallmark after Goldsmith's Hall, therefore guaranteed the purity and value of the article. The next mark was added in 1363, when makers were ordered to have their own symbols stamped on everything they made. Nowadays, makers use their initials to avoid confusion. In 1478, a third mark was introduced to indicate in what year the piece was tested. Here, the letter F shows this piece to be 1503. The letter was changed each year, and the design of the alphabet five times a century which makes dating simple and accurate. The Goldsmiths Company itself introduced the Lion Mark in 1544. This mark guaranteed that the silver was at least 92.5%, the sterling standard. In 1697, the sterling standard was replaced by a higher standard known as Britannia, a figure of Britannia replacing the Lion Passant. The Britannia standard with its special mark is still occasionally used, although the sterling standard was restored in 1720, together with the old marks. In 1784, the assay office was made responsible for collecting the duty imposed on silver. Payment was signified by a mark showing the head of the sovereign. The duty was abolished in 1890. Other marks were introduced for the various standards of gold, on this 1967 salt, a crown signifying gold and 22 for 22 carat. This 1968 gold-mounted Nautilus shell cup is hallmarked 18 carat. And from 1975, platinum too has been hallmarked. Six and a half centuries of hallmarks, protecting maker and buyer alike. 
guaranteeing that the gold, silver or platinum has been tested and found up to standard. Here at the London Assay Office, over 14 million articles are handled each year. Not surprising when the law demands that every maker submits his work before sale. A laboratory process, but on an industrial scale. Testing over 14 million articles each year to an accuracy of one part in 10,000. The assay begins with minute samples being taken from each article. Because of this, the makers usually send in their work in an unpolished state to avoid damage to the finish. Every component part of an article must be tested. This silver teapot, for example, is made of 12 separate parts, and each must be sampled and up to standard for the whole teapot to pass. The silver assay depends on a quantitative chemical analysis, so the sample is first weighed to a high degree of accuracy. The sample is then dissolved in nitric acid. An exact amount of salt solution is added, and this reacts to precipitate silver chloride. To pass, there must be some silver left in the clear solution, so adding some more salt should make it cloud. Compare the cloud with this known sample, and it has easily passed, being over 92.5% pure silver. Sample 732, on the other hand, looks as if it hasn't passed. The result will be confirmed by continuing the test to give an accurate measure of how far it falls below the standard. Gold has four standards of purity. 9, 14, 18 and 22 carat. Pure gold is 24 carat. So this cup, which is supposed to be 18 carat, should contain at least 18 parts pure gold to 6 parts of alloy. Like silver, gold samples are first weighed. Assaying gold is, in effect, a refining process by heat, in which all other metals have to be removed. The samples are wrapped in lead to help the reaction in the furnace. The samples are placed on special porous blocks called cupels and heated to over 1000 degrees centigrade. At this temperature, the cupels absorb the lead and the base metals as oxides. When cool enough to be handled, the samples are flattened, and rolled into a spiral called a cornet. Immersing the cornets in boiling nitric acid and finally annealing them completes the process. leaving pure gold. Comparing the weight of this gold with the weight of the original sample gives the degree of purity. In this case, the pure gold remaining weighs slightly over three quarters of the original weight. Therefore, the cup has passed as 18 carat and can now be hallmarked. This cup did not pass the lowest legal standard and receives very different treatment. The assay office is empowered to break any piece that fails the lowest standard. Before assaying platinum, 
The first process is to sort out any other metal which looks like platinum, for example, white gold. This is done with the aid of a touchstone, a hard, fine-grained natural stone used in early times for a quick test of gold and silver. Streaks are made with each article. A touch acid, aqua regia, is applied, and the streaks then examined for dissimilarity. Here, the last streak to be made is white gold, and the article is separated from the rest. A sample is then scraped from the article under test. milligram sample is accurately weighed. It is then dissolved in aqua regia and heated to dryness. For the final process of assaying, the residue is dissolved in acid and copper sulfate solution added to prevent interference from other metals. Platinum is then determined by a process called atomic absorption spectrophotometry. The solution containing the platinum is sprayed into an acetylene flame through which is passed light of a selected wavelength from a platinum cathode lamp. The amount of light absorbed measures the concentration of platinum in the solution. 14 million articles a year of infinite variety and design are hallmarked with skill and care. The assay office designs and makes its own tools to ensure that every piece is marked clearly and without damage. Like any language, hallmarks have their own special dictionary. And, like words in dictionaries, hallmarks have continued to evolve. The leopard's head, for example, is now the hallmark of the London Assay Office. The hallmarks on this platinum cup read left to right, the sponsor's mark, JB, the orb, the mark for platinum of at least 95% purity, the leopard's head, for the London Assay Office, and the date letter for 1975 when hallmarking for platinum was first introduced. On this silver ship's decanter, RW, the registered mark of the maker, the anchor for the Birmingham Assay Office, the lion passant for sterling silver, and X for 1972. On this silver source boat, the marks read R and B, the sponsor's mark, showing the maker's initials. A Tudor rose for the Sheffield Assay Office. A lion passant for sterling silver. And D, the date letter for 1978. This engraved flower bowl was hallmarked in Edinburgh. MA for the maker. The Britannia mark, indicating the higher standard of silver. The castle for Edinburgh Assay Office and D for 1978. On this gold and diamond brooch, the marks J.A.D. for the designer and maker, a crown and 750 for 18 carat gold, a leopard's head for the London Assay Office, and the letter D for 1978. London, Birmingham, Sheffield and Edinburgh, the four British Assay Offices, Maintaining a tradition of six and a half centuries of protection in these noble metals, gold, silver and platinum. 
a standard recognized throughout the world.